What's up my stat stars, Michael Princhak here, ready to talk to you about the inverse normal model. What? The inverse normal model? What the heck is that? Well, hopefully you watched part one about the normal distribution and how many, many, many continuous random variables follow the normal distribution. Well, the cool thing about the normal distribution is it can work backwards or inverse. All right, let's get ready to talk about it right now. So normal CDF on our calculator is a function. And when you are a function, that means you have input values and you have output values. So the input values for a normal CDF, it's a range of Z scores, um, lower to upper. That's what happens when we go to normal CDF, we give it a range of Z scores, a lower Z score to an upper Z score. And the output is the proportion of data the proportion of outcomes for that particular continuous random variable or the proportion of z-scores that fit into that interval. So input, range of z-scores, output, a proportion that is in between those two z-scores. So for example, here's exactly how it works. If we have a normal model, a normal distribution, we have a z-score of negative 0.5 and a z-score of 1.8 and we wanna find the proportion of outcomes or the probability that an outcome falls into that interval, we're gonna use normal CDF. We're just gonna go ahead and grab normal CDF. The lower value would be the negative 0.5, the upper value would be the 1.8. Hit enter and we get a probability of 0.656 or a proportion of 0.656. So 65.6% .6 of outcomes are going to be in that interval of z-scores. Now we also don't have to look just in between two z-scores, we could look above or below a z-score. So let's just say we have one z-score of 1.8 and we wanna find the proportion of outcomes that are below or to the left of that z-score. Well, when we go to normal CDF, we have to pick a really, really, really low z-score basically negative infinity, but we don't have infinity button in the calculus, we're gonna use negative 99, is that really, really low z-score? Then our upper value is gonna be the z-score of 1.8, and we get 0.964. So 96.4 of all outcomes are going to be below a z-score of 1.8. Now what about the proportion of values above that z-score? Well, if we already know that the below is 0.964, we could just do one minus 0.964 to get the 0.03, eight, excuse me, 0.036 that are above that z-score. Now, if you don't wanna do that simple math, you can actually go ahead and do another normal CDF where we have an upper, or excuse me, a lower value of 1.8 and an upper value of 99. That's going to look all the way above the z-score of 1.8 and you likewise would also get 0.036. So again, those are just a couple of examples of how we use normal CDF. Input, a range of z-scores, output, a proportion. Whether it be a proportion in between two z-scores, below a z-score, or above a z-score, that's how normal CDF works. Now, since normal CDF is a function, that means it has an inverse function where the inputs and the outputs are switched, of course, with a couple rules. Now, how do we access this inverse function for the normal distribution? Well, it's actually right underneath normal CDF on your TID4 calculator. So if you hit second vars, you'll see that list of commands and right underneath normal CDF is the command invert norm. This is the inverse function for the normal model. Now, here's how it works. The input, is an area. Now this is where you gotta be a little bit careful because you actually have three options. You have an area below or to the left, you have an area in the center or in between, or you have an area to the right or the upper values. Now what that means is this, is if you plug in an area of 0.05, which would represent 5%, but you select left, that means you're looking at the bottom 5% of the normal distribution. If you type in 0.05 and you select right, that means you're looking at the upper, the top 5% according to normal distribution. And if you type in 0.05 and you select center, that means you are looking at the middle 5% of the normal distribution. Now, I have to note that if you don't have the newest update on your TI-84 calculator, you do not have the options for left, center, and right. If that is what you're doing when you hit invert norm on your calculator and you don't even see these options for left, center, right, there's just nothing there. Well, that means that it's actually automatically defaulting and set to left. So you have no choice but to look at the left or the bottom proportion. 
But don't worry too much because if you're talking about, let's say, the top 20%, you should automatically know the top 20% of any model is equivalent to the bottom 80% of that model. So you might have to always convert to thinking about the bottom and it's not the end of the world. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that in this video. But hopefully most of you have the newest update where you have the left, the center, and the right option under invert norm. Now, what is the output when you use invert norm? The output is going to be the z-score that marks that area. So once again, if you type in 0.05 with the left, it's going to give you the z-score that marks the bottom 5%. If you type in 0.05 with the right, that's going to give you the z-score that marks the top 5%. Now, if you understand symmetry, and of course a normal model is very symmetric, well, the, the z-score that marks the top and the bottom 5% are the same value, just negative on the left, positive on the right. Now, if you type in 0.05 as the area and you select center, that's going to actually give you two z-scores. It's going to give you the interval of a lower to an upper z-score that represent the start and the stop of the middle or the center 5%. So let's set an example. In this first example, we are looking at a normal distribution where we have shaded in the bottom 8%. And the question is, what z-score represents that bottom 8% to the left? Well, we don't know the z-score. So again, we're working backwards. Remember, normal CDF, we know the z-score, we get the proportion. This is backwards, hence inverse. So we're going to go to inverse norm. We're going to type in an area of 0.08. Now, because we're looking to the left, we're going to select left. And if you do not have the option for left, center, and right, then it's automatically going to go left. So you're perfectly fine. So when you hit enter, you're going to get a z-score of negative 1.405. That means that the z-score of negative 1.405 marks where that bottom 8% is. But don't forget that simultaneous, simultaneously is the mark for the top 92% because there's 8% below, there's 92% above. In this next example here, we're looking at a shaded region that represents the top 25%. And what we want to know is what z-score marks where that top 25% begins. So all we have to do is go to invert norm and we're going to type in an area of 0.25. Okay, not a big deal at all. But make sure you select right because according to the normal model, we're looking at that top or that proportion to the right. So we're going to type in 0.25 and make sure we select to the right. Now, if you don't have the option to select right, then what you would need to do is type in 0.75. Because if we're talking about the top 25%, we're simultaneously talking about the bottom 75%. And we get a z-score of 0.674. So a z-score of 0.674 has 25% of outcomes above it, according to normal distribution, or simultaneously 75% below it. In this last example, we're looking at the middle 40%. What we don't know is what z-scores represent that middle 40%. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to invert norm. We're going to select the area, or we're going to first select invert norm. Then for area, we're going to type in 0 0.40. That's the area that we're looking at. But we want to select center because we're looking at that center area. Okay. Then you hit enter and you're going to get two z-scores. Now notice they're both exactly the same. However, one is positive, one is negative. That's because of symmetry. So we have a z-score of negative 0.524 to a z-score of positive 0.524. And in between those two z-scores represents 40% of the data. Now if there's 40% in between those two z-scores, that means there's 60% left out. But because of symmetry, that means there's 30% to the bottom, 30% to the top, hence that 40% in the middle. Now, I really want to make sure I mention one more time because there, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that don't have the left, center, right option when you hit invert norm. Again, all that means is your calculator is set to only accepting in the proportion at the bottom. So again, just be careful. If you're given this problem right here, talking about the top 25%, you just need to do the quick math on your head that that simultaneously means the bottom 75%. So when you go to invert norm, you're going to do 0.75 and you'll get the exact same z-score, I promise. Or in this problem, we're looking at the middle 40%. You actually have to do a little bit more math in your head. You have to first stop and think, okay, my calculator cannot do center. My calculator can only do the bottom. Okay, so if I'm looking at the middle 40%, that means there's 60% outside. But because of symmetry, that 60% gets split up 30 on the left, 30 on the right. So what you're going to want to type in is 0.30. And when you type in 0.30 into the invert norm, 
on, in the default that it's only looking at the left, you're going to get that z-score of negative 0.524. That's the z-score that marks the bottom 30% or where the middle 40% would start. And then the end of that middle 40% would be the positive 0.524 because of symmetry. So if you don't have those options for left, center, right, you do have to do a little bit more thinking, but overall it's not too hard. All right, now let's take a look at some actual real problems that could show up on the AP stats exam that involve using this inverse normal distribution. All right, the heights of men follow a normal distribution with a mean of 70 inches and a standard deviation of three inches. One particular question we could ask is what height marks the top 5% of heights? Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is figure out what z-score marks that top 5%. We know we're looking at that top 5% of outcomes, we just don't know what z-score marks it, and that's exactly what invert norm is gonna do for us. So we're gonna go to invert norm, we're gonna put 0.05, and then we're gonna select to the right because we're specifically asked out the top. Once again, if you don't have that option to select right, you're gonna to wanna to type in 0.95 because the top 5% is simultaneously the bottom 95%. Now that's gonna give us a z-score of 1.645, but we still got a little bit of work to do because that's the z-score. What we wanna figure out is what is the actual height of this z-score. So we have to go back to our z-score formula and fill in everything we know. We know the z-score is 1.645, we know the mean is 70, we know the standard deviation is three. What we have to do is solve for our x value. So again, we're working backwards, which is exactly what the inverse function is gonna make us do, work backwards. So now we have to do a little bit of solving to get our value, or our actual outcome x that's represented by the z-score of 1.645, which means it has 5% above it. So the first thing we're gonna do is multiply the standard deviation over to the 1.645, then we're gonna add the 70 to solve for x, and we get 74.935. So that means that a man who is 74.935 inches tall or taller is in that top 5% of all heights. All right, we could also ask a question, what marks the 15th percentile of heights? Well, first we have to remember way back from unit one what the definition of a percentile is. A percentile is the area or the proportion or the percentage below. So by saying the 15th percentile, we're talking about the bottom 15%. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and figure out what z-score marks that bottom 15%. Of course, we're gonna grab invert norm. We're gonna type in 0.15 and we're gonna make sure we select left because we're looking at the bottom or to the left. Now again, if you don't have the options, you're fine because that's exactly what your calculator is set to do automatically is look at the left. And that's gonna give us a z-score of negative 1.036. So then we're gonna go back to our z-score formula. We're gonna substitute in the mean 70, the standard deviation three, and the z-score that we just found of negative 1.036. Do a little bit of solving, multiply by the three, add the 70 over, and we get 66.892. That means that any man who is 66.892 inches tall or shorter or lower or less is in that bottom 15%. That would mean that if you are a man that is exactly 66.892 inches tall, you are officially at the 15th percentile because 15% of heights outcomes are less than you. Now, one last question we could ask is, what range of heights marks the middle 50%, which actually would be the IQR. So this would be a great connection problem to unit one where we talk about IQR, that middle 50%. All right, so the first thing I do is figure out what z-scores mark that middle 50%. So of course, I'm gonna go to invert norm and I'm gonna type in an area of 0 0.50. Then I'm gonna select center because I wanna get the center. Now that's gonna spit out at me two z-scores. That's gonna give me a z-score of negative 0.674 and positive 0.674. Those are the z-scores that have 50% in between them. Now, if you don't have that command for center, once again, you have to think, okay, 50% in the middle means 50% outside. 25 on the left, 25 on the right. So the z-score for the bottom 25% would be negative 0.674, and that means the other end of the middle 50% would be positive 0.674 because of symmetry. So overall, not too bad. Then we gotta to go to our z-score formulas, substitute in one at a time. We gotta do this twice, because we gotta find two values. So first we'll type, plug in the negative 0.674 with the 70 and the three for the mean standard deviation, and we'll solve. Then we'll do the exact same thing for the other positive 0.674. We'll solve each one of them, so we get a lower value of 67.978 inches. 
Then we'll solve the other equation and get an upper value of 72.022 inches. That means the middle 50% of all heights of men are in the interval 67.97 inches to 72.022 inches. Not too bad, takes a little bit of work, but it's not overall that difficult as long as you first understand how the invert norm command works. All right, I wanna do one more problem with you because this is another very common AP stats test question dealing with using invert norm and working backwards a little bit. So here it is. The heights of females follow a normal distribution with a mean of 64 inches. Melanie is 67 inches tall and she knows, maybe her doctor told her, that she is at the 88th percentile of heights. Now the question is, what is the standard deviation? Hmm, okay. Well, let's process everything we know. We know the mean, that was given to us as 64 inches. We know that Melanie's actual height is 67 inches, and we actually know her Z-score is 1.175. Now, I might be like, well, it never said Melanie's Z-score. How do I know Melanie's Z-score? Well, because the distribution of women heights follows a normal distribution, and I knew she was at the 88th percentile, that means I can go to invert norm. A percentile is the proportion of outcomes, the proportion of women heights that are below Melanie. So I can go to invert norm, I could type in 0.88, and what's gonna come out now, make sure you select left, because percentile means below or to the left, and what we're gonna get is the z-score of 1.175. That's how I knew what her z-score was. Now, that's where you have to process. If you know a percentile and you have to be following the normal distribution, that's where you could use invert norm to get your z-score pretty quickly. So if you think about it, I know almost everything. I know the mean, 64 inches. I know a z-score. I know a particular height that matches that z-score. What I don't know is the standard deviation. So I'm just gonna go to my z-score formula. I'm gonna plug everything in I know, the z-score of 1.175, the mean of 64, Melanie's actual height of 67 that we know produces that z-score, and the only thing left for me to solve is for sigma. So the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply the sigma over to the 1.175. Then I can actually do the very simple math in my head, 67 minus 64 is three inches. Then to solve for sigma, I'm gonna divide the 1.175 over and I get 2.553. So that means the mean of woman heights is 64 inches. And I just found out that the standard deviation for woman heights is 2.553. So this is a very common AP question because it's gonna make you do a little bit of algebra, a little bit of solving, but you have to understand that since we follow a normal distribution, we could take that percentile and turn it into a z-score. But I wanna be very careful. You cannot take any percentile and turn it into a z-score. Only percentiles that come from data that you were told follows a normal distribution. All right, that's it for using the inverse normal distribution on your calculator. I hope it makes a lot of sense to you. I hope this video explained it. I didn't go over a million examples, but I think I just did enough to make sure that you understand how it works. I hope you have the option for left, center, right on your calculator. It does make things a little bit easier, but if you don't, you do have to make a little bit of calculations in your head. Hopefully it's not too bad. Can't wait to see you in the next video. And if you haven't already gone and gotten my ultimate review packet for AP Statistics, I highly recommend it. It's gonna give you everything you need to practice during your units and practice for the AP exam in May. Best of luck, see you in the next video.